before we hear the preaching from God's word, I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of thy holy child Jesus, we thank thee for thy word. Thy word is truth. Thy word is alive. And we pray, O oh God, Thy Word would even change our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And He said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Sixteen verse fifteen. Yes. They do the we saw today in the Bible before Jesus gave this command to his disciples to go into all the world and preach the gospel of every creature. He had to rebuke them. <laughs> Their hearts were hard. We saw today from God's word if our heart is hard God cannot use us. The most important part of a human is the heart. If the heart stops beating, you die. And no matter what your sickness is, if you go to the doctor, from a child to an adult, they will first check your heart. Check your blood pressure. And count how many times your heart beats. If a doctor wants to know if you're healthy or not, he does not look at your waist. He looks at your heart. He looks at your blood. And that tells him, that tells the doctor, if you're healthy or unhealthy. We have a doctor in Bangkok. He's a very good doctor. He delivered my three children. And no matter what your problem is, he looks at your hands. And by the color of your hands, he can tell if your blood is working or not. The heart is the most important part of the body. Everything a person says comes from the heart. Everything a person does it comes from the heart. If the heart is not right the speech or talking is not right and the actions are not right. Before Jesus Christ could command his disciples to go into the world and preach the gospel he had to rebuke them their hearts were hard if our heart is hard God cannot use us when I was born again I used to have hate in my heart 
I used to hurt people. Yes, in my heart. Was full of hate. But when I got born again, the hate left. And God's love came into my heart. And I began loving other people. And because of love, that's why you can preach the gospel. It all starts with the heart. We saw today, before Jesus commanded his disciples, to go into all the world and preach the gospel. He had to rebuke them because of unbelief. If you believe, all things are possible. At Mark 16, 17, Jesus says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Where a person believes, signs follow them. What kind of signs? John chapter 14 verse 12. Jesus Christ says of those that believe, in John 14 verse 12 verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because I go into my father when a person believes in Jesus, he can do the works Christ did. What did Christ do? He healed the sick. A person that believes can pray for the sick and God will heal them. What did Jesus do? He cast out devils. A person that believes in Jesus Christ, they can cast out devils. What did Jesus do? He raised the dead. A person that believes can raise the dead. Many years ago, in America, there was an old sister, an old woman. She used a walker, and she had one eye that was closed. One eye closed. But she told the story when Jesus raised her from the dead. She was pregnant when she was young and had a miscarriage the baby came up too early and a lot of blood came out and she died on the bathroom floor when she died she got to see heaven how beautiful it was. And she was looking for Jesus. But something made her come back. And she didn't want to leave. But something took her away. Brought her back into her body. In the hospital room. And her pastor 
was praying for her. And she said with her eyes closed, Why did you pray for me? God can raise the dead. Jesus says, What he did, if you believe, you can do. Why? Because we're special? No. No. Because Jesus has gone back to the Father. In John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works in thee shall he do, because I go unto my Father. To a mudo tata yuichi do, a mudo go lep you lay me, a tamu ganga di kamero tato to a yue. Jesus died on the cross. He rose from the dead. He went back to the Father. And now, he is the Lord of the Lord. He is the Lord of the Lord. And now, in verse 13, And what, so every show ask my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14. If you show us anything of your name, I will do it. Because Jesus has gone back to the Father. When we pray in His name, He will do it. If you believe. And because of that, the works that He did, can we do also. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. Jesus says, And these signs shall follow them that believe, and my name shall they cast out devils. Verse 17, right? Yes. A believer in Jesus can tell devils to go in the name of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus has gone back to the Father. And if a believer ask anything in his name, he will do it. If we ask in the name of Jesus for devils to go to cast out devils, they will go all over the world. They worship devils. They're scared of devils. In Burma, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia, all over the world, Europe, Africa, America, they're all scared of devils. And everywhere you go, everywhere you go, everywhere you go, you will see people so scared of devils that they bow to them. They worship them. They're scared of them. But if a person 
believes in Jesus, we can do the works Jesus did. Just like the disciples. In the name of Jesus, we can cast out devils. Those that worship devils, they think the devil give them power. But there's no power greater than Jesus. And the devil's power cannot defeat Jesus. He has risen from the dead. Back in 2007, I've been preaching the gospel in St. Clavary. There's a bridge built by Buddhist monks. Our order bridge. Yeah, bridge. Saban. Saban Mon. Bridge over the water. In St. Clavary. And I would go there and preach the gospel. The Buddhists were very upset. In 2006, at Christmas time, they had the Christmas cup. Football cup. Football. At the Buddhist temple, they had the school team. The hospital team, um, the church team, uh, and many teams uh, play football at the Buddhist temple in St. Calabri. And a Burmese pastor, they asked him to speak on the microphone in Thai. But his tie wasn't that good. And he asked me, could you speak in the microphone? I'm always ready to preach. I love microphones. Everybody can hear my voice. So I go to the Buddhist temple. And there is a nice seat set up. Nice chair and table. And a microphone. And all the football teams. Were all in front of me. In front of me. And behind me is all the people watching. And the microphone. And the paper. With all the names. What number they are. And in the microphone, my voice went to all San Calabri from the Buddhist temple. People wanted to hear about football. And if so and so, if some person kick the goal. I'm supposed to announce it. The name, the number, what team he's from. And all of a sudden, Clavery can hear about it. I don't like football. I don't like football. Football hurts my neck. Kick it here. Kick it back there. Kick it back here. That hurts my neck. I don't like football. Look at the paper. All these names. Thai names. Burmese names. Karen names. Mon names. There's too many names. I started preaching the gospel. <laughs> While I was preaching the gospel, <laughs> all the football players <laughs> are looking at me. <laughs> they don't know what to do. <laughs> all the people in the stands <laughs> are looking at me. <laughs> I'm preaching the gospel. <laughs> I'm preaching about heaven and hell. <laughs> Jesus is the way. <laughs> the referee, you know, the referee, <laughs> he saw I wasn't going to stop. So he blew the whistle. And they started playing football. 
stuff. They started playing football now. And I'm not talking about it. I'm preaching about Jesus. Huh. And the more I preach about Jesus, the more I preach, the happier I become. Uh, happy. Happier. Uh, I stand up. I turn around. Forget the football. I begin preaching to all the people. The Buddhist monks. They all came out. They did not know what to do. I'm preaching the gospel. They called the police. The police came. They did not know what to do. They called the mayor, the Puwa. He came. They don't know what to do. I'm preaching the gospel. Finally, a mobile phone comes to me. <laughs> mobile phone. Somebody gives me a mobile phone. Mobile. Mobile phone. Cell phone. Oh, Hello? Hello? It's the Burmese pastor. He says, that's on. Preacher. A preacher. This is a temple. You can't preach. I've been preaching for 30 minutes. The pastor, he did not know what to do. I said, okay. I preached 30 minutes. I'll let somebody else have the microphone. I'll let somebody else come. I'll let somebody else speak now. The pastor is happy. He said, thank you, Jimmy. I gave the phone back. <laughs> Somebody else started talking. <laughs> and there's two doors. Two doors. <laughs> this door. <laughs> nobody's there. <laughs> I can walk out. <laughs> no problems. <laughs> this door. <laughs> Buddhist monks. <laughs> police. <laughs> and the mayor. <laughs> so I go to this door. <laughs> and shake their hands. <laughs> and tell them next year. You can invite me again. <laughs> no problem. I'm always ready to preach. <laughs> they didn't know what to do. They shook my hand. <laughs> In 2007. <laughs> we came back. <laughs> to get Bibles. <laughs> to Karen soldiers. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> New Testament. <laughs> New Testament uh, in Corinth to give the soldiers <laughs> in Burma. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. We came back to San Calabri <laughs> and we stayed in a little boat. Boat. Uh, a boat. A clean. In San Calabri. <laughs> when we arrived <laughs> and put our bags down, <laughs> nobody was there. We went to Hoimalai to give the New Testaments and we came back and next to our boat next to our boat was another boat with Buddhist monks many of them okay no problem we went to sleep yeah, I went to sleep. At four in the morning, I wake up, so to pray. But before I pray, I have to brush my teeth, use the bathroom. And when I get up, in the boat, is all these streams. What is all the strings? <laughs> Trying to brush my teeth. <laughs> Come to the bathroom, brush my teeth. <laughs> Wash my face. <laughs> Come back out. <laughs> and look at all these strings. <laughs> They're going into the other boat. <laughs> and there's many Buddhist monks. <laughs> and they're all facing me. <laughs> and they're chanting. I go back to pray. I realize. I did not learn. They're playing with fire. They're trying to curse me. Big mistake. 
I believe in Jesus. I have power to cast out devils. I'm a believer. Yes. Not in an idol. I believe in Jesus who rose from the dead. I don't believe in a dead Buddha. I believe in Jesus who is alive. Amen. And in his name, and in his name, I can cast out devils. Those Buddhist monks, they're doing something bad. I prayed for them. We left that morning, came back to Bangkok, and in Bangkok, in the building we live in, in the building, there is a Thai woman who loves Buddhism. And she asked me, Where have you been? I said, In St. Calabria. Did you hear what happened? No, what happened? Uh, sorry. What happened? The famous monk. They named him Utama. He was the one trying to curse me. He died. That day. Why? Because Jesus is alive. You can't fight Jesus. And if you see a believer in Jesus, you can't curse them. We have power to cast out devils in the name of Jesus. Everyone else, they're all scared of devils. They're bowing down to devils. They're worshiping devils. But believers in Jesus, we can cast devils out. We have power over the devil. And by this, we can set people free. There's many people out there. They have problems with the devil. The devil visits them. The devil visits them. The devil comes into them. The devil controls them. They don't like it. They want to be free. And we that believe in Jesus, we can set them free. We can cast those devils out. So they can be saved <laughs> by believing in Jesus. My father, my dad, he was not a Christian. And his friends, they're not Christians. But he told them, if you ever have a problem, you can call my son. You can call my son, call me. And he can pray for you. Because though my father's not a Christian, though my father's not a Christian, he knows God answers my prayers. And he tells all his friends, if you have a problem, call Tony. He'll pray for you. One day, one of his friends called. He screamed on the phone, yell. <laughs> Tony! Tony! Pray! Hung the phone up. And then hung up. So I prayed for him. That night, he called me. He called me back. He said, everything's okay now. I said, what happened? He said, oh, the doctor says, my wife is under stress. I said, I'm asking you a question. Did your wife try to kill you? 
Uh, he said yes. I said the doctors are wrong. She's got a devil in her. And I will come. I will come. And cast the devil out. My wife and I went to the hospital. The doctors have put her to sleep. That made her sleep. And so when I read the Bible, her eyes would open, but all you could see was white color. All you see was the white color. You see, the body was asleep, but the devil in her was alive. So I told him, stop the medicine. Stop medicine. And when she wakes up, we will cast the devil out of her. That night we prayed all night. In the morning time, she woke up. We prayed for her. And inside her stomach, in her stomach, you can see things moving. And she was talking to them. And they were talking to her. And in the name of Jesus, we cast them out of her. And she started throwing up. And was set free. And her husband came to Jesus. Believed in Jesus. A miracle took place. This is everywhere. They're all scared of devils. They have no power over the devil. Only Jesus does. <laughs> and we that believe, we can cast those devils out. And they will go. In the name of Jesus. Because the same things he did. Casting devils out of people. He says that we can do. We that believe. And we that believe. In Jesus. <laughs> we have nothing to do with the devil. <coughs> we don't bow to them. But the Lord do tell we don't worship them. But the Lord we cast them out. We have nothing to do with them. We have nothing to do with them. He's our Jesus. Yes. He is a winner. He rose from the dead. Yes. And the devil <coughs> is a loser. He's going to hell. So we believe in Jesus, a winner. And I have nothing to do with devils that are losers. And because we believe, we can cast devils out. If they come to you in a dream, in the name of Jesus, they have to go. If they come into you in the darkness, in the name of Jesus, they have to go. If somebody tries to use devil power to curse you, in the name of Jesus, those curses have to go. Yes, these signs shall follow them that believe. In the name of Jesus, they shall cast out devils. That name. The name of Jesus is above every name. There's power in that name. And if you believe, you can use that name and cast devils out. And this is how we preach the gospel.
Like Jesus did. Like his disciples did. We don't just speak words. We don't just say words. 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 We don't just say words. Words. Yeah, we don't just say words. We have power. Power over the devil. Miracles. Casting out devils. And by that power. That's how we see people come to Jesus. We send the light. And the darkness must run away. When we preach the gospel. We take power over the devil. And we cast the devil out. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank thee for thy word. And we pray, O oh God, thy promise can happen in our lives. That in the name of Jesus, we may cast out devils as we preach the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.